What's the difference between level design and game mechanics? If I'm actively asking myself questions, then I know I'm actually paying attention and not just zoning out. It's like creating my own mini quiz. And if someone asked me these questions, I'd know how to respond. I like to rewrite definitions. I start with the original definition, then create my own version. When I write my own definition, I try to meet two key requirements. Would this make sense to someone else? Would this make sense to a nine-year-old? I like the idea that you truly know something if you can simplify it. Now, not every concept has to be simplified to a nine-year-old level, but try your best to make it as simple as possible. I do this all the time. If you are paying attention, you would have noticed I did it to you when I explained the Pareto principle. 20% of work equals 80% of results. It helps me a lot, and it's really a test to see if I actually understand what I'm learning. I like to combine text and visuals in my notes. You've heard the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, in game development, that's really true. Diagrams can often explain concepts better than paragraphs of text. Now, all this note-taking and organizing is pointless if you don't actually make games. So I try to develop games, obviously. Currently, I build web games and distribute to web platforms. My games have reached more than 10 million gameplays. Whenever I'm learning a game development concept, I like to do this. I follow a tutorial to learn the basics and then I create my own example doing the same thing. I try to notice if there's a pattern to it. Let's do an example. Let's say I'm learning how to create a character that can jump. So I follow the tutorial and then I create my own version, maybe making the character jump higher or adding a double jump. Now I'm going to look for a pattern. Luckily for character movement, there is one input controls, applying movement to the character, adding animations, testing and tweaking. As you can see, this makes it really easy to understand the concept. But simple examples like this only go so far. You also need to practice with real projects. I spend more time building actual games than doing endless tutorials. This way, I learn by doing and reinforce my understanding of key concepts. And you all keep asking me, what's the best way to learn game development? Well, this is it right here. Just make games. Literally, just make games. It's that simple. I don't really take notes when I build projects. It's really just trial and error. But I do like to design and diagram things like my game levels, characters, or I just visualize how the game will flow. Visualizing really helps me understand how the project works. And it's a great experience because you're going to be doing this a lot. Alright, let's speed run some other learning techniques. Number one, active recall. Your brain is like a muscle. Now most of you probably don't work out and that's okay, but you need to work out your brain by testing it. Instead of just rereading notes, quiz yourself on whatever material you need to know. This is pretty obvious, but quizzing yourself will make you remember the information better. It's not a surprise. Number two, spaced repetition. This technique is basically just taking gaps between study sessions and increasing the gap each time. This technique is based on the theory of the forgetting curve, which is just a fancy way of saying the longer you don't study, the more you forget. So when you first start to study the material, take like a one hour break and then study it again. Then maybe take a two hour break, study it again. Now now take a day break, study it again. Take a week break, study it again. You get the point. You just keep increasing the gap. Pace repetition helps you remember more, which means you don't have to study as much, which is what I want. Why? Because I'm lazy. Number three, AI. We're living in the age of AI, and I'd be missing out if I didn't show you how you can use AI to study. There are AI tools that can help you with coding, art, and even design ideas. I use AI tools like ChatGPT every day to explain concepts, write gameplay code, level editors, debug some code, and even challenge my understanding by asking it to explain things back to me. Next thing is AI-generated practice quizzes and ideas. Honestly, this is a game changer for active recall. I can quickly create questions about any game development topic I'm studying. It's like having an infinite supply of practice problems. One of my favorite techniques is comparing AI responses with my own notes. This helps me identify gaps in my understanding and sometimes introduces new perspectives that I never considered. I like to use AI to simplify and refine my ideas. Remember how I said I like to simplify concepts so that a nine-year-old understands. AI helps me do this, which also helps my own understanding. Number four, building your own projects. If there's one thing you can do when it comes to studying game development, it's building your own projects. If you're serious about making games, you've probably heard of Game Jams. It's an event where you make a game in a short amount of time, like 48 hours. It's hard to get good at making games quickly, but it's great practice. A lot of people approach this the wrong way. They try to make the next big game, but ideally, you should try to understand how to make a simple game that works. So here's how I like to structure my game development practice. I use a simple to-do list to keep track of my projects. I have four simple categories. I ideas in progress, needs polish and completed. The categories are pretty straightforward and whenever I create a new project, I include this information. Game name, genre, engine used, time it took to make and once I want to get details of a project, 
it's going to have this information. The game concept, a short description, port mechanics, art style, challenges faced, lessons learned. This can be written in a physical notebook or you can use a simple tool like Trello. By structuring my practice like this, I can easily review projects, track my progress, and focus on areas where I need improvement. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. This all sounds great, but it seems like a lot of work to set up and you're not wrong. But here's the thing, the time you invest in setting up an efficient learning system pays off tenfold in the long run. Remember what I said, I like to get done in two hours what another person does in eight hours. That's the plan, that's the goal. And if that doesn't motivate you, here's some successful indie game developers who made amazing games all by themselves. And my final point, curate your social media feed. We're already spending time on social media, right? Scrolling through Twitter, Instagram, or watching videos on YouTube. What if you could turn that time into passive studying? By following game developers, artists and designers on these platforms, you can dive yourself in the world of game development without even trying. This way, every time you check your feed, you're exposed to new ideas, tips and inspiration. This is passive studying. Since you're already spending time online, why not fill your feed with content that helps you learn and keeps you motivated? By curating your social media this way, you're constantly connected to the game development community. You'll see what others are working on, get inspired by their journeys and maybe even make some friends along the way. Remember, learning doesn't always happen have to be active. Sometimes just being in the right environment can make a huge difference. So, moral of the story, you'll never be a good game developer. Wait, what? Just kidding. The real moral is, start now, keep it simple, and have fun making games. So, to wrap it all up, start making games to learn. Focus on core concepts using big questions. Use simple tools to jot down ideas. Apply the 80-20 rule to maximize your learning. Actively recall and use spaced repetition. Utilize AI tools to aid your learning. Build real projects and participate in game jams. Create your social media feed to passively learn from others. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe if you like the video.